so FTP intake pipe install so what we are going to do is replace this pipe because it's leaking from here and at the seal with the new FTP pipe now this should be a pretty simple install because the FTP pipe this pipe on the turbo is held on by a C clip the same clip we replaced on this pipe so that should come out pretty easily and this is just clip on clip off these I have to get a screwdriver over here to get these things off the hole and that should come up pretty easily and there's one connector over here and there's another set of pipes going into the chart pipe in the back so although you don't need to take the intake or this air box off I'm still gonna take it off because it makes life a lot easier so let's get started for tools I have a flathead screwdriver and a pick screwdriver the pick is gonna be used to take off all the stuff you know all the connectors over there and the flathead screwdriver is going to be used to take off a lot of this these clamps so step one disconnecting the intake you have to pop this out there's a mass in the connector get this out of the way tuck it in somewhere then disconnect the hose this is actually pretty simple you see these two you just pull them together and just wiggle the wiggle this off it's the clamp so this comes off get it out of the way now intake removal is again very simple take the air box cover off first air box cover comes off put it over here air filter comes off put it over here and you just pull this up so last time this was a little bit of a pain but yeah now I know what to do one off two off and this third one is a bit of a pain to pull out third one I think I pull out so this is the third one okay intake box is off so now now you can see the thing so this charge pipe if you can see there's a C clamp over there that's all it is held on by so we got to disconnect these and this and that should be remove the charge pipe Yeah, this is already, oh my god, I don't want to dust in that, wow, like I said, this spot's leaking, so, cut this out of the way, okay, so this one again, I don't think I'll remove this, but I might as well disconnect the connection. This part is, you can see this one, so I think this is, should be a pretty simple one, you squeeze and remove, so. No, that's not as simple as we thought. So let's do one thing. Let's see. Actually, let me just remove the pipe from here first. The C clamp is there. Ah, oh, this is way. We are pleased to put a C clamp in here. So where is the C clamp? Up. Okay, so go down there. What I'm trying to get at is that metal clamp over there. You can see it. And I need to get some working space for that. So C clamp is out. It's actually put in like this. So you need to find a way to get a screwdriver on this side, pull it out. And the side player will just slip out. You don't need to get save any of these C clamps because the car, the kit comes with it. So this is yes. A 
Okay, so now this is going to be a very interesting connector to remove because Turbo charger. So, if you can notice, that is the turbo charger right here. Pretty small turbo for this car. I mean, the Octavia turbo chargers are much bigger. So, I'm gonna clean it up with the cloth first and then install the next install the intake pipe. Clean up over here. So this is a new charge pipe. It comes with one C clamp over here and one C clamp on the in for the intake side. So first we are gonna put it in this way. I'm gonna do it the same way I did last time also, which is remove the C clamp first from the pipe and then install it. So this is our new C clamp. I'm gonna keep it here. I don't lose it. Put in the pipe first and then put the C clamp in place. So. Pipe. It is thing already had the O ring, so you don't need to replace it yet. I'm gonna take a bit of an effort to put it in, but <coughs> yes, pipe is in. Now we try to put we connect put all the other connectors. This thing is pretty simple, it goes in straight down. Is it as simple? Wait a minute. Okay, so this O ring needs a little bit of lubrication. I can actually take some. Let me put the clamp first, then we'll do the O ring. So C clamp goes in this way. Hope you guys enjoy my struggles. So, yeah. the grooves yeah okay the yeah both the seats locked in place good so that was another pain now we just plug in all the sensors so first sensor we're gonna plug in I'm gonna turn you over here again so is this one the back one. This one should go pretty easily. It's a hard side. Just put it in and just line it. It should snap into place. Still not in properly. Okay. Yep. Clipped into place. Both sides. 
uh, there is no pressure on these lines so it should be all right this one has an o-ring in it i want to lubricate the o-ring a little bit so i'm going to take some Uh, some clean engine oil with me so I need to lubricate this part with the engine oil let's put this somewhere it doesn't fall hopefully yeah so I'll just lubricate the o-ring nicely it's very dry I think that is the problem don't worry about it this is gonna go into a turbo and burn up anyway so just to be on the safer side, yeah, this needs a bit more lubrication. Nothing like lube. Okay. Okay. Back to it now. Let's attempt three, I guess. Okay, now it's going to be very easy. Yep, that's all it took. Some lube. Mm, who's, people talk about WD 40. I think there's nothing you can accomplish with some lube if you get what I mean. Okay, so. That bit is done. Intake pipe is ready. So now you put the intake back in. Again, this one grommet which comes off every time you gotta remove it with a screwdriver. So this grommet is a bit of a pain. So you take a flatter screwdriver, put it in here, and you put it off. There. This grommet. Now this grommet goes here, so just squeeze it in, yep, so one, two grommet and the third one goes into there, this part goes into your airbox, so let's put the airbox back in, yeah, just remember when you're putting the airbox, this side slides in over here, so don't break anything over that side. So Line up everything. Okay, this is all right. Now you just give it a nice shove, and everything just clicks into place. Remember, this is the kind of an angle, so be careful about that. Next thing, just put the filter back in place. Filters back in place, and then we get to the airbox cover for the airbox cover bit. So let's now remember this was helped by a pinch clip. Now it's helped by a C clamp. So, but we lose the same thing. We'll lower the C clamp off its hinges, and then just slide this piece in. Should go in pretty easily. I might have to remove this clamp. Much easier with the clamp out. So okay. So now you can put the one over this in with the airbox. Bit of a pain to do, so just turn it. Yeah. I would say first put the airbox cover back on because it's going to be a bit of a challenge to so turn. Hmm. Put the airbox cover back on first before you put that clamp in place. Okay, airbox cover is back on. the clamp from the bottom it should be pretty easy to put in just line it up just make 
sure it's seats all the way. I want to double check the other seat lamp, it's all the way seated. Yep, all the way seated. Yep. So yeah. There we go, that's your install. So what this does is basically remove all the air baffles of the stock one. So let's say we're looking at the stock box. This is all the air baffles over here and here. This helps this kind of kills your turbo noise, spool up noise and all for the refined people. Mine had cracked from this side, it had leaked, it was leaking from somewhere in between this rubber part and was leaking from this side. This side was okay, so removing this definitely helps. So now the next obvious question is, will this make any more power? No, it won't. This is, a, this is just a pipe, so how can the pipe make power? What about the reason why I'm doing this is just to make sure that the leaking plastic pipe that I had over here before this doesn't let any crap into my car's engine. That's it. Now we are ready, now I'm going to start the car up. I think yeah, everything is in place. Just quick double check. All MAF connected. That connector is also connected and in place. This one is also connected. Okay, that's also in place. I didn't disconnect anything else, so yeah. we are good to go. Give this some some play over here. Good. Let's start it up, see how she sounds. much of sound which is a good thing I could hear a lot of bubbles at startup so that definitely helps so the air isn't leaking into my turbo anymore and the problem was that the leak was happening post your mass airflow sensor which is always a bad thing so now we just put the cover on although it's summer time so I'm going to start running without this cover in winter you can still get away with this cover on the car, engine cover, but in summers, no way. This cover I can put on. Once. So, okay. Here we go. Yep. All good. Another thing you guys would notice is that I have there's a Foam, foam sound insulation behind the engine over here which I have removed due to the heat foam cover is no longer there because it's causing too much heat retention on plug number 4 now you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 spark plugs clearly and the fuel pump has also got some lot of fresh air coming into it that foam cover sits over this and covers the trap seat in the fuel pump it's good for the winter weather, cold weather climates, but not so good for India at all. So that's it guys, that's your install of the 
FTP intake pipe. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll do a drive video in a bit. Here's a here's a quick bonus on how these sound insulators work. If you notice, there are holes over here, so the air goes in here, gets isolated, and goes out through the hole over there. It's a pretty neat little resonance chamber built in, but we don't need resonance, do we?